All right, it's that time. It's the last one. Principle number six and video number seven. Uh, the science of the uh, guiding principles of scientific inquiry. This is number six. Disclosure. Woo. Let's get into it. So the final principle here is the disclosure principle, disclosing research to encourage a professional scrutiny and critique. Um, so like the first two principles are all about the question. The second two principles are about method and reasoning. The fifth principle is, of course, replication, which kind of stands on its own. But the sixth principle is kind of one of the is one of the penultimate things in where um, science really distinguishes itself our scientific inquiry distinguishes itself from a lot of other things, such as the critical theories. Critical theories do not um, encourage professional scrutiny and critique, but scientific theory regularly does. Um, uh, and it's, in fact, a critical part of scientific inquiry and science as an entire enterprise. So this is not just encapsulated in a scientific principle, but it's also encapsulated in uh, the two, two of the norms of uh, science being, one of them being Excuse me. One of them being uh, communality, which means scientific interest belong, scientific knowledge belongs to all, and that is the prin the normative principle by which we say we have to do, uh, we have to provide publications, we have to do reports, we have to make sure it's out there and available to the public, um, but also available to each other to actually cr critique and scrutinize this communality. But it's also the principle of organized skeptic uh, the normative principle of organized skepticism also lines up with this principle on inquiry um where you basically have to uh scrutinize according to established empirical and logical criteria you know is the reasoning good is the evidence good is the method good all that jazz and not um based upon intents and mot um, intent and motives you're not to you're not to assume intent you're therefore for example with disorganized skepticism, you are not to assume, I mean, not disorganized skepticism, I'm sorry, organized skepticism. With organized skepticism, you are not to uh, say just because someone disagrees with you, they're evil. No, you have to critique their um, methods, their logic, their reasoning, their evidence, their data. All of that is what you're critiquing if you're doing um, organized skepticism by that normative principle. And that is where they come in here. The two of the normative principles come right in here with this sixth principle of scientific inquiry. Disclose research to encourage professional scrutiny and critique. We argue in chapter two that a characteristic of scientific knowledge accumulation is its contested nature. Here we suggest that science is not only characterized by professional scrutiny and criticism, but also that such criticism is essential to scientific progress. Scientific studies usually are elements of a larger corpus of work. Furthermore, the scientists carrying out the particular study always are part of a larger community of scholars. Reporting and reviewing research results are essential to enable wide and meaningful peer review. Results are traditionally published in a specialty journal, in books published by academic presses, or in other peer-reviewed publications. In recent years, electronic version may accompany or even substitute for a print publication. Results may be debated at professional conferences. Regardless of the medium, the goals of research reporting are to communicate the findings from the investigation to open the study to examination, criticism, review, and replication by peer investigators and ultimately to incorporate the new knowledge into the prevailing canon of the field. So this is this is this is basically you're you're making it to the end to then get started to repeat the whole thing <laughs> in essence because once you finish the study you got to open it up this is where you send it off to peer review you're sending it uh, you're sending a study to peer review to be reviewed critiqued by everybody else in your field and sometimes very mercilessly uh, reviewed and critiqued by everyone else in the field to assess you know did did you do it right were you rigorous were your methods good were, were did your method actually address the question is your reasoning coherent is it explicit is it does it make sense this is where it comes in the gut check to make sure that you were following the other particularly the top four principles in there um appropriately of scientific inquiry appropriately and is your results good um does it link to doesn't make that even even if you're if you even if you're refuting a theory and sometimes if you're especially if you're refuting a theory or claiming to refute a theory you will get a lot of extra criticism um and that's and that's good because you're you're challenging prevailing wisdom it's going to get a lot of not prevailing wisdom prevailing uh thinking um here so you're going to get a lot of critique and criticism and that's and that's fair that's normal here but this is where it comes in you're supposed to be disclosing it you are not supposed to be secretive about it and uh, the opposite of communality the norm is secrecy so in here you are you're not supposed to be secretive you are to make sure it gets out and gets um 
critiqued by everyone and you are to be very open to critique and criticism and scrutiny and it's not that they're after you in the peril of politicizing science video and that article um there was a lot of discussion in that where it's just like no 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 your personal your personal things outside of what you're doing your research has nothing to do with the critiques that are there Uh, absolutely nothing or at least in most cases it should not um if it does then there's something something that needs to be addressed in certain terms of ethics but um in here there there this is the thing but you have to be willing to take critique and criticism um and have it be opened up to very professional and rigorous scrutiny and this is the point in the principles of, principles of scientific inquiry in the process this is where you get to that um the goal of communicating new knowledge is self-evident research results must be brought into the professional and public domain if they are to be understood debated and ultimately ultimately and eventually become known to those who could fruitfully use them. The extent to which new work can be reviewed and challenged by professional peers depend, depends critically on accurate, comprehensive, and accessible records of data, method, and inferential reasoning. This careful accounting not only makes transparent the reasoning that led to the conclusions, promoting its credibility, but it also allows this community of scientists and analysts to comprehend, to replicate, and otherwise inform theory, research, and practice in that area. So... This is actually um, very good and goal. Of, I mean, it is self-evident. You want to you want to make sure your work is out there that other people know about it and all this kind of jazz, understood, and debated. But the the it's it's undersold how much the critique and debate part of it is incredibly important. Um, a lot of scientists who've been doing this for a long time do have a lot of respect for people who stand up and critique their work carefully issue some very strong criticisms go back and forth with counterpunching arguments um there's a lot of good to that in that it helps you refine your arguments your theory make sure it stands up to some intense scrutiny um in here and that's and that's incredibly important to making sure because we're talking about we're talking about understanding the world that it is and in, in in the broader context of science and society that's incredibly important because if we're not telling people about the world as it is and we're not very sure we're telling people about the world as it is and why it is, um, that can lead to people having some really piss poor policy or making poor decisions with the information that comes out of the scientific community. So this is actually probably critically important to make sure that you're open for critique and criticism and making sure you're getting to the truth. Um... And and but it also leads to some issues with us science wise and credibility with the public as, as they're going to go on and talk about here and I'll get to that in a second. But this debate, they are the discussions and debates that we have back and forth and opening yourself up to critique is incredibly important and it is certainly not for everybody because some of the commentary can get pretty biting, at least in terms of professional going back and forth. And it's a funny thing because some of the professionals that I know who have biting critiques of each other. Um, I remember seeing it as an undergrad and it was just like, holy crap, man. <laughs> they have biting critiques of each other. But, you know, when they're when they're off of that and they're they're out of that professional critique, they're the most collegiate, wonderful, love to talk to each other people, go to lunch with each other, have dinners, you know, go and see and see each other outside of work and you know, pr- great relationship with each other, but they may have biting nasty critiques of each other <laughs> in their professional work and their arguments and what have you. And that's the difference between separating professional and personal here. And that's not for everybody because some people do have a difficulty separating critiques that you get in professional with science and versus the personal. And and some of them can be really biting attacks. I mean, some of them. So it's just something to keep in mind there. And, and that is a, an interesting part of the problem we have uh, when it comes to science. Folks who are not used to seeing it um or or don't quite understand it with our with the principles of scientific inquiry is many non-scientists who seek guidance from the research community bemoan what can easily perceive be perceived as bickering or the indication of bad science quite the contrary intellectual debate at professional meetings through research collaborations and in other settings provide the means by which scientific knowledge is refined and accepted scientists strive for an open society where criticism and unfettered debate point the way to advancement through scholarly critique uh see 
and debate, for example, Putnam's work has stimulated a series of articles, commentary, and controversy in research and policy circles about the role of social capital and political and other phenomena. And the Tennessee class size study has been the subject of much scholarly debate, leading to a number of follow-on analyses and launching new work that attempts to understand the process by which classroom behavior may shift in small classes to facilitate learning. However, as Legman has observed, for many reasons, the education research community has not nearly been has not been nearly as critical of itself as is the case in other fields of study. Okay, on that last point, I don't know the education research community all that well, so I can't comment on that. Um, but it is true that some disciplines are more critical of others I've, than others of themselves. Um, I have observed that with some that I work with. Um, <clears throat> and here, it's an interesting observation to have. But um, this this really stern critique of each other is incredibly important. And what you're actually seeing read, read in there, um, though most people wouldn't um, recognize it, is actually liberalism and Western Enlightenment philosophy, where you have repeated critique of each other. Um, this is something, this kind of open critique is something that is not allowed in communism. It is something that is not allowed um, in socialism. It is not something that would be allowed in under the Chinese Communist Party, for example, um, and it is certainly not allowed in critical theory. Um, as I pointed out in the in the episode of critical race theory is anti science. Critical theory in general and critical race theory too don't strive for unfettered um, criticism and unfettered debate. They actually view debate as being upholding white supremacy. So this kind of thing is another. It's it's an aside here, but it's a point that I do want to make that uh, critical race theory and critical theory is again anti-science because it does not allow for this kind of debate and what have you. Basically shuts it down, um, again, in violation of the disorganized, um, disorganized, the organized skepticism norm, but also in violation of this principle of scientific inquiry, which demands, it is not a suggestion, it is a demand that you open your work up for rigorous, rigorous um, challenge and have your work challenged, and particularly by people who very vehemently dis who may very vehemently disagree with you on that particular pro point professionally, and that's because it allows you to refine the theory. And liberalism, Western Enlightenment principles, things like that do very much allow for that kind of refinement, critique, improvement over time that very illiberal things like fascism, communism, socialism, the rest don't allow. And in fact, here's a good example for you. Um, Trofim Lysenko's theories regarding um, genetics, which were adopted and praised by Stalin, uh, were completely and horrifically wrong. Um, so much so that when implemented, they led to they they contributed to a massive famine in the USSR. Um, but because Lysenko and Stalin and uh, the Bolsheviks, the communists of the USSR, would not allow open any debate on it. Lysenko was right in their view. That's it. Lysenko was right in their view. That's the end of it. Um, here, because they wouldn't allow that debate, any scientist who was dissenting, um, either they were forced to not dissent to save their lives, or they were forced to, uh, they were punished, imprisoned, got no research money, or they were just outright executed. Um, that is completely counter to this guiding principle. It's completely counter to the organized skepticism and communality and all the other norms that I talked about. So this is probably one of the most important ways in which uh, science as a whole, the scientific inquiry process as a whole, links with society, um, and, and particularly under Enlightenment uh, and liberalism in particular, and a republic, and the republic that we have in the United States, um, or under a democracy even, this is actually incredibly critically important to have it be open debate, criticism, unfettered, pushing back and forth until you get to what is the proper generalization of the future. And and it's through this willingness to disclose that you have disclose that you have replication and the process of scientific inquiry continues. Um here and a sort of never ending thing that it is. So that's a kind of aside here, because this last video is actually really easy when you're talking about disclosure, which in, in a way it gets, it gets incredibly ignored, but <clears throat> it is actually incredibly important. This careful accounting not only makes transparent the reasoning that led to conclusions promoting its credibility, but it also allows the community of scientists and analysts to comprehend, to replicate, and to, and otherwise to inform theory, research, and practice in that area. 
<clears throat> Quite the contrary, intellectual debate at professional meetings through research collaborations and in other settings provide the means by which scientific knowledge is refined and accepted. Scientists strive for an open society where criticism and unfettered debate point the way to advancement through scholarly critique and debate. For example, Putnam's work has stimulated a series of articles, commentary, and controversy in research and policy about the role of social capital in political and other social phenomena. That's the point here. Uh, scientific inquiry goes on. And having that open society, the unfettered debate, is incredibly important. Having it open in the scientific community is incredibly important. And it's unfortunate to see some of the woke who do not believe in that um, get into science. But anyway, that's my tangent on this, and I tried to avoid doing that. And I, hey, look at that. I successfully avoided swearing in the whole series. What do you know? <laughs> Anyway, if you like this video, subscribe to this channel. Please comment below. Um, there's some th things going on with locals soon. I'll have some updates on that probably. But um, I look forward to seeing your comments and critiques. And if you'd like to know more about scientific inquiry, you need me to review an article or you want to hear on a particular topic of why it is what it is in science, let me know. Um, until next time, I'm Adrian signing off. Stay curious, my friends.